Hi guys, my name is Adrian and in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about VS Code and the extensions that come along with it. Because I've got some really cool extensions that allow me to code faster, they allow me to make less mistakes and they allow me to enjoy my coding experience just a little bit more which makes my life better. And if you haven't heard of VS Code, that's fine. I've done development for a long time and I came in from it when we were using Dreamweaver by Adobe. And that's fine if you haven't heard of that, but then we moved on to things like Notepad++, which was good as well because they had some coloring and syntax formatting there. But when VS Code came out by Microsoft, I immediately fell in love with it. It had some really awesome stuff in there and you could tell that Microsoft really cared about this product because they would essentially be releasing monthly updates with new features and functionality that I didn't even know I wanted until it arrived. I love now reading those change logs that they produce each month when they do these updates because it really speaks to me and some of these things are really cool stuff to check out. But what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to go over some of the extensions that I use in VS Code and some of the themes and fonts and all these things that essentially when I'm coding it makes me code a little bit faster and it enjoy, makes me enjoy that experience a little bit more and hopefully these are some of the things that might be able to help you guys as well. So let's jump into it. The first thing I want to show off is the actual theme I use for VS Code and this is the theme that I personally like and the reasons I like it are very but it's called Atom 1 Dark Theme. And you've probably seen it, it's one of the most popular on VS Code, but what it essentially is, it's just a very dark version of the editor where you're actually getting some really bright colors for things like the functions, the methods and the variables. So they have these nice pinks and blues and reds and greens and they stand out very nicely. I personally like this and a lot of the development I do isn't usually during the day. I do a bit of a mix during the day and at night time. And by not having white as the background Ground. It's more relaxing on my eyes. This dark color essentially doesn't give me as much eye strain and that's one of the reasons I actually like the one atom dark theme. Now, of course, there's lots of variations to this. You can get a more purple tint to it, you can get a white version as well, and you can diff get different shades of dark, but this dark version is the one that you'll be seeing in most of my tutorials and the one that I personally like. The second extension that I use on VS Code that I personally like a lot is actually called Auto Close Tag. And this one here is quite useful because it saves me just a second or two of coding every time I do. And what it does in essence is whenever you create a tag, whether it's in HTML or even if it's in React, then an automatic tag gets created that closes that off. And this is useful simply so that you always have the right indentation, you always have the right tags placed and essentially it just makes life a little bit simpler and a little bit easier. And what this does is go really well hand in hand with this second extension also called auto rename tag. And what this one here does is if you have a look it automatically renames both sides of the tags as well. So what this means is I could create a div and we'll have the entry and opening and the closing tags created automatically. But then if I want to change that to an A tag, we can simply delete it and change the A tag either at the start or at the end of that tag. And the entire tag from the top to the bottom will be replaced and the syntax will be updated. So that way I don't actually have to go in there and change the top and the bottom part of the opening and closing of that tag. Now, be aware that sometimes this specific extension has caused me issues where um, sometimes it doesn't understand where the first tag opens and the second tag closes it. So sometimes I do have to disable it, but usually that only happens in React where I've got lots and lots of code. But in the most part, this feature allows me to save again just a few seconds in development, but over a week or a month, that time does add up. I have a couple of other extensions here, but these were just things that I played around with and I don't specifically use them. But what I do use is the Babel JavaScript uh, extension here. And what this does is it just gives me a bit more syntax highlighting and a couple of other things that make my work in React a little bit easier so that all of that essentially looks a little bit better because sometimes the syntax doesn't look very good and I might, might miss some of the highlighting that I 
otherwise don't get just through the one atom dark theme. Now, another one that I really like is called Beautify. And Beautify is a extension that allows me to press F1 and just automatically beautify a file. So what does this mean? It means that, for example, if I forgot to do indentation, if I've done the spacing incorrectly, or I've just done stuff where the file looks like a mess, Beautify will go through and read that file and it'll automatically spit out a file that looks properly done, like with proper proper indentation, proper spacing, proper formatting for functions and all of that. So it's hard to explain without seeing it visually, but uh, if we take a look at maybe one of the files I've done here, we could exactly, for example, just delete some of these lines here and press F1 and type in beautify and pass this in JavaScript. And we can see that straight away, all the syntax has been updated here. So it looks a little bit better. This is the essence of Beautify and works with JavaScript, works with HTML, and it's got a lot of uses to make life easier. Now, the code spell checker is a lifesaver for me because when I'm doing a lot of coding, sometimes I just miss spelling things correctly. And what this extension essentially does is make sure that when you're writing out words, it double checks them against a dictionary and make sure that you've spelled them correctly. So if you've got a spelling mistake, it'll underline sort of like Microsoft Word or Google Docs or stuff like that. And this is really useful because when you're doing a lot of code and you're working on client websites, sometimes you might not see a spelling error you might make. And this has saved me from making them which is a godsend. I've got some more plugins here that I don't really use, but um, what I use a lot of is the image preview, especially when I'm doing CSS and image preview. What it does is it gives you a little preview of the image you're importing if it's in CSS or HTML and it puts it here next to the line item. So while, you know, it's not that big of a feature, it's just something that makes my life a little bit easier and saves me a little bit of time when I'm coding. We also have Live Server. And if you don't know what Live Server is, it's almost like a small little development server where you can print out a file that you're working on onto a Chrome window. And what's cool is that you can do hot reloading with this in the sense that it refreshes the browser every time you make some changes. So you can keep working on a file and visually see what's going on without um, constantly moving across and hitting refresh, 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 which I used to do a lot of in the past. We also have LiveShare. Now, if you haven't used LiveShare before, it's something developed by Microsoft and it allows for real-time collaboration. So this means that you can open up your VS Code editor and you can share it out to someone and they get a visual representation of the entire project you're working on. And they'll be able to see the current files you're working on and they can even jump into the code and start typing in there. You'll see their little cursor and you'll be able to see their changes that they're making live, which is really cool. It also means that you don't have to download an entire GitHub repository. You can do some shadowing, you can do some work remotely on Zoom and work on the same project together. So that's really cool. And if you guys haven't checked that out, I definitely would recommend checking it out. We also have a couple of other plugins here, like for example, making my markdown a little bit easier. But the next one that I really like is the React Native Tools and the React Code Snippets. And the Code Snippets especially is something that always saves me heaps of time when I'm working on React code. And what it does is it essentially fills out a React component for you by just passing in a little bit of syntax, such as RCC might create a component in React or even a functionless component. You don't have to write out all the syntax to create that and it's just automatically generated with the imports and exports and everything like that. And personally, I love this extension. I've been using this for years now and it saved me heaps of time over the years. Finally, I think that's mainly it. I've got a couple of other simple ones here, such as SAS, which simply does some SAS highlighting for me. I also use VS Code icons just to have some nice icons here on my VS Code. And other than that, that's mainly it. I don't really utilize anything else besides that. Just maybe the SVG viewer as well um, to make SVGs viewable inside my um, VS Code. There are also some plugins which I started using that I gave up on and one of them was comments and bookmarks. Now, Better Comments is a cool plugin because it allows you to do inline comments with nice coloring and syntax where if you add in a question mark or an exclamation mark, you can have some really cool comments with colors of what you might need to do in that file. But I find that things like this and things like the bookmarks was not an efficient way for 
for me to do a lot of my work simply because if I was making notes in files then I lost track of that and a much better way to be able to task myself on things that I had to fix or tasks that I had to do was to use a system like Trello or GitHub issues in general and if I did it inside files it just wouldn't keep track of it. I also tried out Bracket Pair Colorizer and while it's a good plugin I somehow just didn't end up using it that much. We also had the Git Lens and Git Lens is a good plugin that sometimes I enable when I need it, otherwise I don't. And it essentially tells you what's happening inside Git, who's changed different stuff and all that little kind of stuff. But usually I work on most projects myself so this wasn't very useful for me unless I'm working on a larger project. We also have a couple of other things here and one of the other plugins that sometimes I use is the indicator or the line counter and this tells you how many lines of code you have for a file or even a project and this is just useful statistics for yourself to seeing how big a project is but it's one off and this is why I usually keep these disabled and just enable them when I want to give them a test. Otherwise yeah that's mainly most of the plugins that I use and other than that, I usually try to do most of the work myself. VS Code is a really useful thing and I love the fact that it's got lots of extensions, but there's probably heaps that I don't know about. So if there are extensions that you guys use, I'd love to know what they are because I always want to see if I can work a little bit better, more efficiently, and maybe I'm missing out on some stuff. So I'd love to hear what you guys use in terms of plugins for VS Code. And if you have, add them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.